to talk about is the new human agenda. And so for that, I'm gonna take you on a journey with me, and I think it will give context to the companies that you're building and also the work uh, that you're doing in your own lives. So this is one of my favorite books. I also love Sapiens, and the interesting thing about this book is that in it, Yuval Harari posits that the next human agenda has to do with longevity, happiness, and augmentation. And happiness is kind of a big word. Uh, what exactly does it mean? And I would say that it has to do with belonging and fulfillment and meaning making and the connection um, that we make with one another. These are the things that go into happiness. And so that would seem like a, you know, it seems like that would be in conflict with a lot of the things that you see in the news. And it's a very frustrating time where it just seems like people are feeling and that it doesn't seem like we would have an agenda where happiness would be a big part of it. How could that be? But by every objective measure, human life is actually, or by many objective measures, human life is actually better than it's ever been from life expectancy to um, the number of people with electricity. I mean, all of these measures, like things are better. The other thing that we know is that the automation, the software line is rising. And so when you look at analysis of what sort of jobs will be there in the future, you know, one of the things that's coming is like there's so much change. And so, but what is true is that we're really going to be moving from a time period where we're doing a lot of things to being. And we're actually really not, not that great at being. And it's a movement from industrialization, where our school systems are designed to fit people into places like this, to where things like this, these sort of traits that you see up there are going to become more and more important. This guy knew that we weren't very good at being. And MIT says that we're not very good at being because the job skills that you're going to need to be employable in 2030 are things like this. And so the thing that's so interesting about it is that where do we learn these skills? Right now, we sort of count on the culture to do it or the old institutions of meaning making. And if you think about what two of the traits that really go into having these types of skills, one is the level of self-awareness and two is the ability to connect. And that, that underpins a lot of these other skills that are going to be, that are considered things that are must-haves in order to be employable in 2030. And so the question is, how do we, and it's the question of this conference, what does it mean to wire humanity for the future? And so if you look at our technology, all of our technology is on exponential curves, but human development is not. Like, how, what is the answer to this question, and how do we know who we are? and what sort of person we want to be, how do we grow, how do we evolve. We really sort of do that the old-fashioned way still, um, but, you know, that leaves a gap. There's this gap between our technical abilities and our inner development. And so that is one of the core elements of trans tech. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of sensors and wearables and there's AI and pattern recognition, but a lot of it really comes down to understanding who you are and then having the ability to connect to other people. So these are three of the things that we really focus on with transformative technology, the questions that we're really approaching, is to support the mental and emotional well-being of humans, to provide a new mirror through data, sensors, and feedback, to better understand ourselves and others, and then to create new tools to positively shape the psychology of humans. And so the way that you would think about it is approaching old systems in new ways, creating new technologies, and then creating new systems that optimize both. And so, you know, just to give a little bit of sense, if you watch the psycho, if you've been tracking the psychological data at all, then you would know that stress is accelerating across the world. It's accelerating across countries, 
cultures, age groups, both genders. In the US alone, there's a $350 billion annual estimated loss due to stress and all of the associated productivity losses that come with it. And then, you know, if you think about loneliness, loneliness is a greater risk to one's health than obesity. And 45% of Americans said that they felt lonely. And 16% of global millennials say that they feel lonely every single day. So this translates into rapid health care costs rising. In the UK, two, no, it was three quarters of uh, elderly people in the UK said that they felt lonely. It's kind of, it's a bit of an epidemic. And in case you think that these things don't matter to you, um, emotional contagion, um, the, the, the transference of an emotional state from one person to the next is a real thing. It's true, and Facebook actually proved it with one of the, one of the studies that they did several years ago that you might have heard about, where they uh, manipulated and changed feeds and saw how far a certain mood would travel. So this is not theory anymore. This is true. So the loneliness um, and stress of others has a direct impact on you. The World Health Organization estimates that by 2030, depression will be the leading disease burden in the world, and today it's already the leading disability. And, you know, suicide is also accelerating. In the United States, from 1995 to 2015, it was up 24%. But this last year has been one of the most amazing years in terms of human technical ability. Um, the progress that we've made. So we've got, this, we've got this giant gap. And we also saw fear-filled populism sweep the globe. When I look at this, um, I don't really think about the positions, the relative positions of people. When I look at this, I see fear. So clearly, scalable, accessible, affordable means to support the psychology uh, and the mental and emotional well-being of humans is needed and going to become even more important. And so the interesting thing is that we are entering the age of the brain and we also are in the age of the mind. And these two reinforce one another because as we learn more about one, we also learn more about the other. So from a neuroscience standpoint and also what we're able to now discern with uh, massive data and psychology. It's a very fascinating time to be alive and there's a lot of potential in terms of tools that can be created to positively support human beings. And so, you know, to this question, what would you do, what would people do to have more of the blue and less of the gray? And the truth is, is that people are already trying to solve this problem. The trans-tech market is hidden inside these marketplaces already. And you can see it, it's hidden inside the number of people who are searching on meditation, trying to solve this problem. It's hidden inside of Alexa. So this is really interesting. So there's a guy at Amazon who every Monday gets a report of the commands that people are, what are people asking Alexa for? And at the beginning of the year, they saw Alexa help me relax, show up. Um, the first time it showed up, they thought it was, and this is, these are millions of commands. So I just think about, for those of you who have Alexa, how many times you talk to her today, these are all the Alexa units worldwide. Um, people asking, help me relax. So it's showing up there too. So this is how we look at the, at the spectrum for human well-being. So on one side, you have technology that supports people with stress, anxiety, depression. In the middle, you have the human condition, happiness, connection, meaning-making, mindset. And on the far side, you have the people who are expanding the mental and emotional capacity of human beings. And for me, all of this is trans tech. And there are companies that I'm interested in who are working across the spectrum. You heard in the panel earlier today, RL saying that there's you know, two kinds, very near term and things that are very far out. Well, it's this entire spectrum. And what's very interesting is you have cases where someone is working on something uh, for one purpose that 
also can be used for something else. So tomorrow morning, Mary Lou Jepson's going to be talking about uh, open water, and their miniaturized fMRI also has the potential to facilitate brain-to-brain -brain communication, telepathy. And what's interesting about that is just not the, you know, that we could, you know, it's not the, the what interests me about that is I think about all of the miscommunication that comes with words. If I could just show you how I feel and what I'm seeing in my mind, then maybe that could reduce the friction that we have in human society. So this is the entire spectrum, very near-term things, very far-term things as well. As Jeffrey mentioned, my background's in gaming. There's a mix of people here who know me, but some who don't, so I'll just say it. I ran, I operated World of Warcraft China, then I went on a meditation retreat, I had an awakening. Um, in 10 days, I felt a level of happiness and joy that I didn't even know was possible, which was, you know, I was a glass, always half full person, I was, you know, always positive, but this was something that I, I did not even know was possible in terms of happiness and the fear, um, my, as, as Hame said, my evil inner roommate, um, that went away. And so that set me on a journey to understand what happened to me and to share it. And because I'd had a background in technology and scale, I wanted to find ways to scale it, affordable, accessible uh, ways, means to facilitate other people having the same experience. So that was me meditating, and that's, this is TransTech. So this is how you're here, and this is where that journey brought us. So we look at 11 different areas or 11 different technologies um, that can be used for uh, transformative tech. And, you know, this is lining up with the exponential technologies that are having all sorts of effects and starting to roll against one another. This is, so I'm just going to throw a few things out there. Um, this one, I'm so interested in this. What this is, is this is, they call it EQ radio. It is, um, it has the ability to pick up uh, emotion from a remote sensor uh, with the same level of efficacy as on-skin ECG. And this is a guy at MIT called Ming Zerpo, who's just, you know, he's just really amazing. But so, like, so this is real. This is real. Um, and we talked a little bit about brain-to-brain -brain communication. This is coming. And then, you know, on the background of all of this, you heard um, on the panel earlier how um, machine learning and AI is really being used to delve into and understand human psychology, human emotion. Um, and, you know, one of the other things, today 40% of the world has a smartphone. Um, not too long from now, 6.1 billion people will have smartphones. So all of this is accelerating. AR is coming, VR is coming. There's a lot of VR experiences. Um, the uh, uh, trip, um, I think they're, they're here. Um, they were just funded by Mayfield for $4 million to create uh, VR experiences for mood um, and so that you could sort of sign up for how you want to feel and feel that way. And so what we do with the TransTech 200, <clears throat> this is our second year, we scrape all of the accelerator batches, we um, look at the investments of different VCs, we look at all the Kickstarters and Indiegogos, we put word out through our entire network and we're looking for the companies. Uh, we're looking for companies that are working in this space. What's fascinating about this process is that Every year there are so many more than the year before. There are so many people pivoting into the space. One of the things that I joke about is like every time a Vipassana course in Northern California lets out, there's like at least 40 new entrepreneurs um, who used to work at Google or, you know, whatever. Um, so it's fascinating. And so, you know, some of the, uh, there's entrepreneurial trends, there's funding trends that the other guys talked about, and then there's product trends. So just quickly on the entrepreneurial trends, like I said, um, there have been the inventors who have been in the space. There have been the people who really started things out. I mean, it's like we all owe it kind of a debt of gratitude really to heart math because they have been in it from the beginning. Um, as well as many other inventors. Then there are people who are technologists, neuroscientists, who are pivoting into the space. There's also people who 
are managing big health care. So, you know, a lot of the big corporations have, um, have their own health care systems, and they don't want you to be sick. You know, it's, it's like an alignment. Like the corporations, they don't want their employees to be sick. It's better if you're healthy. Um, and so they're actually really leading thinkers, as Joe showed you, in uh, preventative wellness. And so the, the space is starting to arrive, um, and the investment is arriving. A lot of very experienced players in medical devices are also starting to roll in. And so this is here. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a here now. Um, and so we're going to publish this in a couple of days. This is the first market map for TransTech. There are um, a little over 400 companies on here. Uh, we divide it as the first row is um, the first row is the the main list, and it's rethinking spaces, rethinking sleep, rethinking meditation. Uh, there's also supporting providers. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot of voice assistants on there. I absolutely believe in that as a, a tool that's going to become um, highly used for mental and emotional well-being. Then we have the up-and-coming list. Um, if someone hasn't shipped yet, even if they're you know, really amazing, um, they're on the up-and-coming list. Everything that's on that top bar, you can buy today. You can buy today, you can use today. Um, and so when we publish that, you'll be able to see it. And then the notable mention, there's a, a you know, a mix of things. Uh, but this is like, this is the list. And we'll share it with you and we're going to publish it. And there's many of the TransTech 200 companies are in here as well. So, um, so one of the things many people don't know about me is I actually got into the video game business because I wanted to launch the holodeck. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, that, I'm that nerdy person. Um, and, you know, this is, and I'm going to leave you, you know, with just, I just have a couple of more slides. Um, in Sapiens, one of the things that Yuval Harari says is that the key to human dominance on the planet has actually been our imagination. Um, and it's been the way that we tell stories, which actually really goes back to human connection. And so if you think back to the beginning of this presentation, when you're looking at, you know, what are the skills, what are the traits that are going to be required for someone to be employable, for them to have a place in the future society as the automation line rises, it's like there is a combination of our past and our future, our ability to connect and the ability for us to use technology to open up our own self, open up our self-awareness and our ability to connect with one another. So I feel like we're coming in many ways full circle. And so I think that AR and VR and that combination of the ability to tell stories integrated with sensors and technology. So if you look at this list, of the technologies that we, we track, and then you think about it in terms of AR and VR, and how quickly this, this is coming, and I do believe it's coming rather quickly, then that plus storytelling, we're really about to enter a new age. And so with Homo Deus, stealing fire, and transformative technology, and with, I was obsessed with sense I thought it was amazing, <laughs> Uh, Sense8 talked about human connection facilitated by sort of like an evolutionary bio connection, and the nexus was through nanobots. So with all of this that you've seen, you would think that this is a new thing. But it is actually quite an old thing. And the contemplative traditions, um, they really were on to something. And even Maslow had, you know, had his commentary on it too. Most people don't know that the top of the pyramid was actually self-transcendence. He just didn't publish on it widely before his death. But you know, on one hand, you have the contemplative traditions, you know, knowing that that there is something about this, this um, something about an awakening, and what it means to transcend oneself. And then Maslow on the scientific side and psychological side, you know, coming to the, the same uh, conclusion in the same place. And so, you know, with transformative technology, there is a natural progression of technology where we're asking what else can it do for us? 
And so these are the things that you should keep in mind and why the space and your place and your role in it is so important is that you are in the right place at the right time and the wind is with you, the demand is there, the ability is there, and in terms of ensuring and preparing that humanity has what we need to transition into the age of abundance, you are the ones. This community is a big part of making that happen. And so the most important thing that I'm going to leave you with today is this. As we move into the second cognitive revolution, as we move into the ability to turn the knobs and levers of our mind at will, like right now, candy crushes between us and dopamine, you know, um, that's not going to last forever. And so what is truly going to be required is that we must actually have an end to suffering. We must actually get beyond sensation seeking. And we must actually come to a level of mental, emotional, and spiritual maturity so that we are the masters of our technologies and not the other way around. Which is why, one of the reasons why I asked the panelists about what they're looking for in terms of the mental and emotional maturity of entrepreneurs is that, you know, I think that the work that you do on yourselves is just as important as the work that you do in your companies. And I think that's going to become more and more true because we, I, and I think many of you do too, there, I have a sense of urgency about closing the gap between the exponential technologies and human development. And I think that that's going to be key, and I believe that you are key to closing that gap in the work that you do. And so I, I am so honored to create this conference for you with all of the volunteers and the sponsors and everyone who comes together because you, know, you are the ones and I'm honored to be in service to you. So thank you.